members of the nominee's campaign know of the effort and try to coordinate with it. The nominee wins the election, and then, realizing the FBI is looking into the whole mess, fires the person running the investigation in hopes of putting an end to it. As implausible as that scenario sounds even as a Hollywood screenplay, that's where the nation stands as Donald Trump enters the final weeks of his first year in office, with a Justice Department special counsel running at full speed, two indictments and a guilty plea already under his belt. The fact pattern that continues to emerge is amazing, said Rick Wilson, a Republican consultant and among the first to question Trump's ties to Moscow during the GOP primary campaign. When I was a young Cold Warrior, back at the dawn of time, we had a healthy suspicion of Russia. Trump personally continues to deride the investigation as fake news and a waste of resources. In a series of tweets on October 29, the president complained that Mueller's probe is looking at phony Trump slash Russia, collusion, which doesn't exist. The Dems are using this terrible, and bad for our country, which hunt for evil politics. Facts that have emerged over the past year, however, suggest otherwise. Cobb still denied that the contacts between Trump's campaign and Russian officials constituted collusion and said that Comey's dismissal had been overblown. But collusion per SE is no longer the issue, according to Wilson. There's no law against collusion, he said. But you know what? There are a whole bunch of other laws that cover conspiracy, money laundering, accepting campaign help of material value from a foreign power to win an election. Trump's denials about Russia began on July 27, 2016, at the same news conference where he invited Russia to hack Clinton's computers to find the thousands of emails she had deleted from her private server. I mean I will tell you right now, zero, I have nothing to do with Russia, Trump said. In the months that followed, Trump continued to deny any contacts with Russia. After the October 7, 2016, statement by the Department of Homeland Security that Russia was interfering with the election, he questioned that analysis. At the October 19, 2016, presidential debate, when Clinton said that Putin preferred Trump because he would be Putin's puppet, Trump argued that it was impossible to know who had done election-related hacking. Our country has no idea he said at the debate, blaming instead at various times China, a 400-pound guy in his bed or someone from New Jersey. Trump for the first time acknowledged that the hacking was done by Russia at his January 11, 2017, news conference five days after the intelligence community's release, but since then he has reverted to calling the Russia story a hoax and an attempt by Democrats to pin blame for their election loss elsewhere. More recently, Trump and White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders have taken to attacking the credibility of a report prepared by a former British Secret Service agent, Christopher Steele. That 35-page report, which has become known simply as the dossier, included a long list of contacts between Trump's campaign and Russian officials as well as claims that Russian intelligence obtained blackmail material against Trump by setting up an encounter with prostitutes at a Moscow hotel in 2013. The report was originally commissioned by a Republican donor, after Trump won the GOP nomination, Democrats took over paying for it. Both Trump and Sanders have argued that the Democratic financing makes the findings suspect. They even claim it proves that Democrats were the ones colluding with Russians because Steele was communicating with Russian sources. I think it's very sad what they've done with this fake dossier, Trump said on October 25. But I think it's a disgrace. It's just really it's a very sad it's a very sad commentary on politics in this country. The dossier seems more authenticated than phony, Tyler said. For Tyler, the issue is not whether Russian assistance ultimately swung the election to Trump who won the presidency thanks to a total margin of 80,000 votes across three key states. The Russians clearly had an influence. Did it make a difference in the race? I don't know how you get to that, he said. More important to Tyler is learning what information, if any, that Putin has on the president. Is he compromised? Every American has a right to know, Tyler said. 
but critics, both Republicans and Democrats, point to Trump's continued kid glove treatment of Putin in stark contrast to the harsh words he's had for some traditional U.S. allies as a sign that he fears Putin for some reason. Trump expressed anger that Congress had passed a bill imposing new sanctions on Russia for its interference in the election and repeatedly states that he wants good relations with Putin. During his recent visit to Asia, the president met with Putin and claimed he again pressed the Russian leader on the election meddling. He said he didn't meddle. He said he didn't meddle. I asked him again. You can only ask so many times. But I just asked him again, and he said he absolutely did not meddle in our election. He did not do what they are saying he did, Trump told reporters on Air Force One. And I believe I really believe that when he tells me that, he means it. But he says, I didn't do that. I think he's very insulted by it if you want to know the truth. The Russians, for their part, denied that the election's topic even came up in the meeting. Democrats, meanwhile, hope to use the Russia investigation to remind voters heading into next year's congressional elections that most Republicans continue to support Trump. The Democratic opposition research group American Bridge even created a website with a Russian URL to drive home that message. Trump won't be on the ballot next year, said Harold Kirstein, a former Clinton campaign spokesman and now American Bridges Trump War Room communications director. But Republicans in Congress, the same people who were fully aware of the Russian cyber attack against the United States last year but have still done nothing to stand up for the American people will be.